NA1SS, NA1SS. This is K5COW. Over. K5COW, this is NA1SS. I read you. Very good. K, uh, NA1SS, you're loud and clear. We're at uh, Daggett Montessori School. Are you ready for their questions? Let me just say that I'm uh, very excited to be talking with uh, Daggett Montessori School uh, students today. Thank you for your time. Ready for the first question. Over. This, hi, this is Avon. How did you feel when you first looked back at Earth? Over. Hey, Avon, that's a great question. That's a very special experience. The first time that I get to look back at the Earth from space, something that I've dreamed about uh, for a long time. And so that was a pretty amazing thing, just to see the bright, vibrant uh, blue and white colors of the Earth. Um, and, uh, and it's something that I still like doing, looking out at the Earth, uh, out the window, and uh, just appreciating the, the beauty of, uh, of the Earth below. Over. Hi, this is Ava. What is your favorite experiment so far in the mission, and what did you learn from it? Over. Ava, a lot of our experiments are ongoing, ongoing so it's not something that we really get the results back uh, right away. I'll tell you that my favorite experiment to work on uh, was on that veggie experiment where we grew lettuce, and that was a lot of fun just getting to see this uh, green living thing in the space station to, to grow it up to the point where we were able to harvest it and eat it. That was awesome. Over. I saw on, hi, this is George. I saw on Twitter that you grew lettuce in space. At our school, we have an aquaponics system that we grow lettuce in. How did you grow yours and what did it taste like? Over. Great question, George, thank you. You know, I think that we probably have very similar systems. We can't have dirt up here, it would float away. So we have, we have these pillows, plastic pillows filled with clay and, and then the plants were kind of seeded in. Uh, to your system, and then every day I would a full of water, and I would load water into the into the clay pillow. Um, and that, uh, that lettuce tasted great. It's a lot of fun to eat fresh food up here. Over. Hi, this is Nathan. How does the lack of gravity affect your blood flow? Over. Great question, Nathan. On Earth, gravity pulls blood down into your leg when you get up into the space. Blood is all the system to keep the blood moving into your chest and head to keep to work, but in the absence of gravity, all of that blood flows up into your chest and head. It's as if, if you were laying on your bed with your feet up a little bit, your head gets very congested, um, you, your nose gets congested, and uh, it's uncomfortable for a while. Uh, but uh, your blood continues to flow normally your heart and your brain get enough blood. Over. Hi, this is Lyra. At what age did you decide to become an astronaut, and what inspired you to do so? Over. Larry, um, I wanted to be an astronaut for as long as I can remember, and I think that it had to do with uh, you know reading and watching movies, and also growing up in a, in a family where my dad was in the Air Force, and kind of growing up around airplanes and those sorts of things. But I also had uh, amazing teachers that just inspired me to pursue um, my dream and to and made me feel like I could, if I studied hard enough, that I would be able to achieve this goal. And I'm very thankful, so I'm very thankful for all the teachers and instructors and people in my life who taught me and encouraged me to well, um, just to pursue your goals as well. Over. Hi, this is Mateen. On Earth, we see one sunrise and one sunset a day. How does it change your sleep-wake cycle when you see a sunset, sunrise, or a sunset every 45 minutes? Over. Mateen, it's a good question. Um, the reason that we don't get affected by that, the rapid sunrises and sunsets is that you'd have to look out the window really to appreciate that. So when it's time to go to bed, we just turn the lights out. We close the windows and turn the lights out, um, and so it's dark in the space station. And when it's time for us to be up and awake, you know, we'll open the windows so we can either see the earth below, but uh, um, we have it light during the day. So that uh, stimulates our, our bodies to, to be awake during the day. Over. Hi, this is Riker. Are there any mechanical or electrical changes in your equipment from Earth's gravity to microgravity? For example, results from the surge. Over. Great question, Riker. You know, um, we, when we're on the, the Earth, we definitely take, make use of gravity to help uh, with a mechanical advantage and also to move fluids around. And so certainly anything um, that requires gravity is not going to work up here. I haven't noticed any electrical changes other than the fact that uh, our computers are very susceptible to 
radiation damage. And so we have to change our hard drives out uh, probably more frequently than you, need, than you need to do on the ground. One of the neat things about being in space is that you can use um, other forces to move fluids around. For example, we have a, an experiment called capillary beverage where they just use the surface area and the geometry of a cup to move fluids around rather than having to use a, a pump. And uh, so that has some great applications for future fuel tank design um, and other things. Over. Hi, this is Tori. When you miss your family, what do you do to feel comforted? Over. Hi, Tori. Um, so being away from my family, my wife and children is probably one of the harder things about, the, probably the hardest thing in this mission for me. Um, and so, but uh, NASA has done a great job with technology. We have an internet phone that I can call down to the ground every day and talk with them. We get a, a, a video teleconference once a week. And so technology has really helped us to, to close that gap. Thank you, over. Hi, this is Claire. If someone has a critical medical emergency, such as appendicitis, what would you do? Over. Claire, we have a limited uh, medical um, supplies and equipment up here, and I'm actually an emergency medicine doctor, so I would do as much as I can. But if somebody was really in critical condition, we would return them to the Earth um, so that they could get treatment on the Earth. Over. Hi, this is Grace. How does microgravity affect your digestive system? For example, does your food float to the top of your stomach? Over. And, and uh, doctors in the very beginning of the space program had concerns about that, but there's actually smooth muscle in the digestive system that moves the food along so that uh, things work pretty well. Over. Hi, this is Ava. We read that being in space a long time can have negative effects on your body. How do you feel about this? Over. Hi, this is Avon. How does the ISS protect itself from radiation or debris in your orbital path? Over. NA1SS, NA1SS, this is K5COW. Do you still read? Over. NA1SS, NA1SS, this is K5COW. Do you copy? Over. NA1SS, K5COW, nothing heard at this end. Thank you, sir. NA1SS, NA1SS, this is K5COW, K5COW, over. NA1SS, NA1SS, K5COW, over. Okay. okay, folks, I think we have lost him. He's gone out of the footprint now. This is uh, NA1SS, this is K5COW73, thank you very much. If you're still just copying, K5COW, clear. Okay, so of our 20 um, questions, we did get to ask half, and which is pretty good. I really wish I could have heard the one about the food floating up in the stomach. I didn't. 
Okay, so I would like all of our questioners to come out onto the stage so we can um, show our appreciation. And we also had two alternates, or four alternates actually, two for each, one, two for middle school and two for elementary, so come on out. Okay, they really did a great job and really probably less nervous than the teachers and I are. So, <laughs> great job, guys. Okay, yeah. we're, we're very proud of you. And you look good in your t-shirts. Okay, so we have, you know, this took a lot of work on the part of a lot of people. So I'm gonna kind of go through the thank yous. First, I do want to thank again, um, um, and Zeta and Ashley Paz for taking time out of their busy day to join us. Um, one person who helps us a lot with all of our programs is Jeff Davidson. That's Jerry Davidson's husband. But he did, there he is back there, back behind that camera. Thank you so much. Um, and then we have, of course, the ham radio club. Um, all these guys have just been phenomenal. I'm just going to read their names off. Uh, Ray Hode, Keith, and y'all might want to kind of wave when I call your name. Uh, Ray Hode, Keith Pugh, Randy Thompson, Harold Reasoner, Bill Werner, Tommy Davis. And I've got Steve Werner. Tommy Davis, David Darcy, Larry Westmoreland, Mark Calross, and James Weatherford. Thank you guys so much. I know that was a lot of work. I also want to thank Betty Westmoreland. Is she in here? She's got to be in here. Okay, Betty, who first came to me saying, oh, my husband wants to know if you guys would be interested in this. And yes, we were, so thank you. Um, A lot of staff members worked on this. We had a committee that met weekly and then it almost seemed daily and um, all the rehearsing and helping the kids to kind of refine their questions. Um, of course, I mentioned Jerry Davidson. Everybody wave. Um, Sandy Yandel, Ravi Teague, Natalie Williams, Janelle Flushi, Christy Urbaniak, Rachel Matheson, Paulette White. And I know you're probably envious of our beautiful t-shirts, and we have Sally Gouldy. Where's Sally? There she is. Okay. Sally Gouldy designed these t-shirts, and they are just incredible. So thank you so much, Sally. Okay, I think that's it. Did anybody else have anything they want to say? Okay, thank you all so much. You've been a great audience. We are staying behind these kiddos um, to maybe answer some questions from the press. And we're going to take a group picture and send it to the astronauts. Um, they have asked for that, so. But, okay, so let's, um, oh gosh, we've got a lot of cameras here. Let's dismiss from the back rows first. <laughs> 